Okay, I guess this is the closest I'm going to get to privacy. So, uh, remember all the... Would you guys be quiet? Hey, be quiet. Sorry, and we have a lot of dogs. So remember all those dating apps? Well, I thought, let's try some, since I never played a dating app before. So these are, these are all the ones that piqued my interest. I'm not sure which one to start on. So... Would you guys leave me alone? I'm gonna go sit by Daisy. Hey, Daisy. Stop following me. So, uh... Oh, since I'm surrounded by dogs, let's play this one. Okay. I'm actually really scared since I've never played a dating app before and I have no idea what they're like. Or dating games, not dating apps. Hey, Daisy. Taking a nap? Hmm. Oh, I have to put a name in. Um, let's go with Hugo. So, I already played the game. The only... Is it recording? Yeah, it is. Okay, good. The only thing was, when I went back to edit it and check on it, the music was too loud. You couldn't even hear me. So, I think I might have to restart the episode. Restart this chapter, try other choices. Um. Hopefully I can still choose the same choices I did earlier. Hey, I got some tea now. That's awesome. Just another day. I live an ordinary life. Go to an ordinary school. I'm just an ordinary guy. That seems really boring. I guess I can't complain too much. Though sometimes I do wish for something out of the ordinary. Am I still Hugo? Sometimes a guy just needs a little excitement. An ordinary life. And then he shows me shadow people on the news. What is this? The strange creatures rumored to have escaped the research institute are still at large. Remain on alert. If you see anything suspicious, contact authorities immediately. We repeat, remain on high alert. Huh. I did say I wanted excitement, but that's not exactly what I had in mind. I wonder if Maria is watching this. Better hurry. Okay, I am Hugo. Hugo, there you are. Mer <clears throat> Sorry. Maria, thank goodness you're here. I mean, safe. Of course I am. Why wouldn't I be? I saw something really weird on the news this morning. Oh, you saw it too? I knew you would. Actually, I wanted to talk to you about that today. She looks concerned about the news. What should I say? 
If you're about to encounter your first choice, it's up to you. To you, how you respond. Comfort her. Maria, I know it's a little scary, but remember, I'm always here. And I won't let anything happen to you. I place a hand on her shoulder com comfortingly. Her worry disappears into a smile. Hugo, thank you. I know I can always count on you, Hugo. You always know the right things to say. I smile, pleased to see her cheer, cheer up again. We arrive at school in no time. Oh wow, apparently it's a free day because nobody's here. The day goes by without any issues, except that you're the only student. Where is everyone? Though the classroom was abuzz with gossip and speculation, nothing strange happened. What gossip? I don't see anyone here. Do you do you go to a a ghost school? See, Maria, there was nothing to worry about. We went to school for nothing because nobody else was here. The media loves to hype up the bad news to make masses scared. Is this another one of your conspiracy theories? Ah, he's a theorist. Now that's not ordinary, is it? Not at all. All I'm saying is there's nothing to fear. Well, that's a relief. Because I have to rush to... Home today. Sorry. It's Mercury retrograde. So I'd rather go home early. Oh, astrology stuff? Who believes in strange things now? Hey, astrology is real. Stars, planets, and the moon exist, you know. Yeah, I'm just teasing you. But text me when you get home anyway. Of course I will. Is she one of those people that thinks zodiacs um, determine your personality completely? Well, I, I think zodiacs are fun and all, but I don't think they determine everything about you. Like, I'm a Scorpio, but that doesn't mean that's my only personality. Other traits come in. <clears throat> anyway, enough about that. Of course I will. Thanks for always c looking out for me. She smiles sweetly before turning around and walking off. I feel my heart ache watching her walk away. She's my best friend. But I can't help it. Lately, her smile makes me feel a strange way. Do I really? <laughs> Do you really what? Ah, what the? Something strange catches my eyes as I turn the corner. Somebody took a picture of you, ma'am. What the? Was that a person? But it was a little too fast to be a person. Maybe, maybe an animal? Are there even wild animals around here? Well, uh, let's see. There's four of them right next to me. They all calm down, though, so I think I'm safe. I follow the movement into the park. What I see before me stops me in my tracks. What the? They're girls? Women? i never seen women in my entire life, even though I was talking to one just a few minutes ago. Why do they look like they're in prison outfits? For my eyes are two young girls, barely clothed and barely conscious. Why are they standing like that? <laughs> this is giving me the sass pose right here. Look at her, she's sassy pants right there. Their clothes are nothing but tattered rags. Their bodies look slightly bruised and dirty. Their bodies look perfect, okay? Even their socks look perfect. Look, look at her socks. Literally, the only thing wrong with them is their clothes. Instinctively, I avert my eyes. But, who are they? More importantly, why do they look so beat up? They look perfectly fine, dude. I think you should leave them alone. My conscience feels that I should try to help them. The logic and suspicion tells me I should be aware. I don't know what they're involved in. And they're barely wearing clothes. I don't want someone to see me here and get the wrong idea. What should I do? You're about to make your first premium choice. Oh, great. I'll... I'll wake them up. It, it wouldn't be right to just leave them there. They might really be injured. I carefully approach the two girls. 
Okay, now everyone prepare, because we're about to get into Creek Fest right about now. They're just wearing tattered rags, leaving little to the imagination. See, see what I mean? This guy's a pervert. My cheeks turn red as I get closer. I don't want to get in trouble for this harassment. So I have to check if they're even alive. Slowly I reach out, a hand to each of the girls' chests. Their faces are warm. I move my hand down to right under their nose, where I can feel their small breasts. <laughs> she was literally just touching their faces. <laughs> I notice the gentle rise and fall of their chests, to breathing normally, unlike myself. I think as I watch the hypnotic movement of their feminine chests. No, I shouldn't stare. But I can't help it. I'm an ordinary guy. <laughs> ah, yes. If you're an ordinary guy, that also makes you a pervert. Makes total sense. Shaking my head, I quickly turn my eyes. I have to be responsible now. I sit next to one of the... to the one who looks to be the younger of the two. Of course you do. Of course. Get them while they're young, am I right? <laughs> she must be about Maria's age. I place my hands over her shoulders and gently begin to shake her. Oh, wait. Wait, did he just assume her age? That's rude. Hey! Hey! Ah, uh, girl, wake up! Hey! I'm able to lift her up into a sitting position. As I continue to shake her shoulders, she flops over, leaning her head right on my shoulder. Ah! Um, hey, girl, wake up! Shoot, now I really can't move. But I don't have to be caught in this situation. Hey, why are you leaning on that boy? Huh? My head snaps to face the voice. The second girl lying beside me on the ground suddenly shifts awake. Ugh, demon! Mackie, are you just pretending so a cute boy can hold you? Aw, she called me cute. Mackie, is that this girl's name? Ah, uh, no, you got it all wrong. I was just trying to wake her up. The one named Mackie begins to twitch in my arms. Suddenly, she lifts up her head and looks at me dead in the eyes. Sorry, I just got a call. What? Who the hell are you? Without warning, she pushes herself away from me and with such force. I'm sent catapulting backwards. Ow! What the heck? Hey, you know, back me up here. We have a threat. I, re I repeat, we have a threat. I like this girl. Mackie, wait. I don't think he's a really a threat. A threat? I was literally just trying to help them. Mackie stands strong, and he better already stands. That's a sass stance right there. One would never guess she was just lying in tatters only a few minutes earlier. Yikes. This cute little girl is actually quite the <laughs> So she can't be that strong, right? I mean, she pushed you, right? Mackie, stand down. I repeat, stand down. I really don't think he means us any harm. He's not like them. Mackie holds back, though somewhat unwillingly. It seems like she was really trust Aina. I wonder what she means by them. Well then, if you're not like them, will you protect us from them? Keep us safe? Huh? Whoa. What a sudden change in attitude. She comes close with longing in her eyes. I, uh, don't think I'm bodyguard material. I'm just an ordinary guy. <laughs> Sorry. I pull away and try to walk off. Hey, hey! That's not very nice. You just leave two young girls here stranded? Stranded? This is literally a park in the city. They're not stranded. What weird girls. I managed to escape before they can change my mind. Did his stomach just growl? I can't shake off the feeling that I'm being followed. I need to get inside ASAP. Just as I turn the doorknob. Ah, I'm being kidnapped. Someone grabs me from behind. 
arms tight around my shoulders. Shh, don't shout! A hand clamps over my mouth. Just let us in. We promise we won't cause any inconvenience. Huh? That voice is familiar. My captor spins me around. It's her. The cute girl. Please. Please. I'm just so hungry. She's gonna eat you, man. <laughs> I'm sorry for using force like this, but we really need your help. Just for tonight. What do I say? Okay, just for tonight. Whoa. I have no idea how you girls followed me all the way here. But I guess you wouldn't unless you were really desperate. Hmm. I suppose one night is fine. But only for tonight, okay? You can eat and wash up. But tomorrow morning, you have to go. Thank you for your kindness. In return, I promise I will explain as much as I can about our situation. Sure. Yay! Thank you, thank you! I knew you'd understand. She throws herself on me, hugging me. We all stumble into the house. Whoa, I don't usually have girls and throw themselves at me. Dude, you're a pervert. Maybe this isn't such a bad situation after all. I let them use my my bathroom to wash up. <clears throat> While I wait, I'm at loss what to cook for them. But do I feed two young girls like that? They're humans, too. Just feed them whatever you would eat. Just because the girls doesn't make them a different species. They're cute and rather thin. They're probably self-conscious. Are they on a diet? Vegan? Vegetarian? Gluten-free? Keto? The list goes on. <laughs> Maria would know. But I don't want to tell her there are two girls at my house. I hold a bag of spinach in one hand and fruits in the other, staring at them in confusion. Ew, you're not going to cook that, right? Huh? Mackie is standing in the doorway with a disgusted look on her face. Aino quietly approaches behind her. Mackie, don't be rude. You should be grateful for anything he feeds us. But, but, vegetables? I'm with this girl. I like her. Ew, ew, ew. You don't like vegetables. Well, what do you like? That! Her eyes sparkle and mouth waters as she points excitedly at my open freezer. It's full of different kinds of meat. You mean you girls like meat? Is, you got a problem with that? Girls can like meat too? <laughs> yes, yes, it's our favorite! Her tongue dangles out of her mouth excitedly. I notice Aino behind her is also drawn to it though she tries to hide her enthusiasm. Phew, I'm good at cooking meat. What a relief. Great, then I can pull all these away. Thank goodness, I still don't get why how humans can eat icky vegetables. I don't understand either, girl. Huh? Shh. Aino elbows Mackie, who quickly shuts up. Nothing, anyway. We'll wait for you out here. She grabs Mackie and pull pulls her away into the living room. Humans? What a weird comment. Anyway, time for food. I mean, time to cook. This is my favorite, so I'm sure they'll love it, too. How meat do I cook? Prime ribs all the way, boy. Everybody loves ribs. Oh, the dog scared me. Luckily, I pre-seasoned the ribs, so they should be cooked in no time. After a while, I bring out the fancy dishes to the dining room. All the fancy ones I see. Wow, that looks so fancy. And it smells great. You must be such a great cook. How did you know ribs are my favorite? A lucky guess? Well, I'm starving, so let's dig in. The huge smile on her face is quite the contrast to her earlier hostility. A sense of relief and satisfaction washes over me as I watch her eat. Creep. Don't just... What? Maybe she was just hungry. Yeah, everyone's cranky when they're hungry. I've never seen girls with such appetite before. Why is watching too... Okay, this is really creepy. I is this normal in anime? This really was delicious. I haven't eaten something so exquisite in a long time. 
She politely brings her dishes to the sink and goes to wash up. Thank you so much for the delicious food. I feel so great now. And you're an amazing cook. She suddenly wraps her arms around me, catching me off guard. Ah! I, um... My eyes dart around, but Aino appears to be gone. She must have went to the bathroom to wash up. Maggie's arms tarten, tighten around me. What, what do I do? I want to hug her back, but I don't have enough. Uh... Hmm. I don't know how to get rubies. I, um, appreciate it, but... I gently pull her arms off of me and slowly pull away. Maybe you shouldn't be so cuddly with a stranger. Oh? Her expression is deflated as her eyes turn to the ground. Sorry, but I don't want Aino to walk in and see that. Oh, Penny, are you okay? Having a nightmare? Oh, Penny. But you're not a stranger. You're my new friend, who is also a great cook, right? Ah, I see. She's in it for the food. Well, yes, but we also just met today. True, true. Normally, young girls shouldn't be hugging men that they just met. Why? I thought you weren't dangerous. I'm not, but some men are. If you're not careful, you could end up in trouble again, like before. Her eyes widen in surprise at my comments. But is that a threat? No, that's not what I meant at all. Uh-oh, she looks upset now. Should I not have said that? I stuttered, trying to avoid a conflict. She lets out a loud, low growling sound. She doesn't look that upset, actually. But thankfully, Aino's approaching voice seems to calm her down just in time. Maggie? Aino, you're back. Maggie turns her full attention back to Aino. Relieved, I quickly turn on the TV to change the subject. Shadow people again. Huh? What the? Hey, how dare you? Huh? Maggie. Oh. Oh no, it's them. What are you guys talking about? We're interviewing some researchers from the Institute right now to tell us about the incident. Researchers, they say, as if. They're not researchers, they're devils. What do- Wait, do you mean you know about that incident? I switch off the TV, realizing it made them upset. Suddenly a light breaks in through the window. Oh, the moon. Aino sighs and closes her eyes, succumbing to the moon. Soon enough, her ears have been replaced with what looks like furry animal ears, and wolf-like whiskers poke out from the sides of her nose. I don't see those whiskers, where are they? Mackie, by her side, tr begins to transform, too. Well, what the... You girls are... Okay, I promised I would explain to you our situation, so please don't freak out. The truth is, we were the ones who escaped that institute, but it's not what you think. What? I knew they were suspicious, but it doesn't make sense. But the news says, said the escapees were dangerous. You look a bit different, but still you're just two young girls. You're still two young girls, right? Is this some kind of hoax? No, it's true. We can be dangerous. You see, we were experimented on with, uh, wolf genes. Wolf genes? We're wolves! Don't you get it? I know, shoots her a glare. What she means is, we're humans who were experimented on to make us, um, like wolves. Hence the wolf traits. That explains her love for meat and sensitive hearing, too. But they don't seem that dangerous. I notice Mackie's ears perk up as if sensing something. A few seconds later, the doorbell rings. Huh? I wonder who it could be. Hey, Hugo, are you there? Open up! Oh, crap, it's M Maria. I can't let her see these girls. Ah, oh, what the... Oh, no, Mackie, calm down. Hey, what's all that noise in there? Hugo, what's going on? God, Maria, wait. 
I shout as I run to the door. Shoot, she already heard the girls. What is she going to think? Ah, make it stop. Me Mackie, why is she yelling? This is driving me crazy. Hugo, open the hell... Wait. Hugo, what the hell is going on? Open up. Wait, I'm coming. Mackie has really sensitive hearing. Open the door and Maria bursts in. Oh. Wow, she actually looks cute. What in the world? Hugo? Who are they? I mean, what are they? Werewolves? God! They don't look like werewolves. They look like girls with wolf ears and tails. She screams upon seeing their wolfish features. Mackie, no! Maria, look out! Before anyone could stop her, Mackie leaps on top of Maria and bites her right into Maria's neck. Okay, so that was episode one, I believe. So anyway, um, I'll see you guys later. I mean, I know nobody watches these videos, but I thought it would be a fun little series. So anyway, goodbye. These three knuckleheads were the ones making all the noise. And the one yawning over there is Daisy. Oh, you were sleeping right there the whole time. Oh, hush. You're not as cute as this little munchkin. Sorry, Belle.